Good morning. Lovely day, isn't it? Hello, and we're back, and here's five failed television pilots. Chameleon. A 1998 science fiction action film written by Bennett Cohen and directed by Stuart Cooper marks the initiation of a trilogy, followed by Chameleon 2 Death Match and Chameleon 3 Dark Angel. Premiering on October the 22nd, 98 on UPN, the film introduces Cam, portrayed by Bobby Phillips, a genetically engineered super killer who unexpectedly discovers her maternal instincts while attempting to shield a child from government interests. Critical reception provides varied perspectives, with Jim McLennan in his review for Girls With Guns noting restrained action with some gunplay and minor martial arts and expressed a desire for more exploration of the central character. And Nathan Rabin of the AV Club criticises Chameleon for embracing futuristic android clichés. The film received two award nominations, one for its best makeup slash hairstyling in a motion picture or miniseries at the OFTA Television Awards and a Young Artist Award for Eric Lloyd's Best Performance performance in a TV movie, pilot, miniseries or series supporting young actor. Despite the mixed reviews, Chameleon captures attention for its exploration of a genetically modified protagonist caught in a struggle between her lethal nature and newfound maternal instincts. I smell blood. Her sunglasses are the only thing she doesn't like to take off. Kill it or sleep with it. Or both. That's Stormy Weathers, a 1992 action adventure film directed by Will McKenzie and featuring Sybil Shepherd in the lead role. It follows the intriguing plot of Detective Samantha Weathers, hired by an Italian aristocrat to delve into an old inheritance matter. Weathers discovers that the case is far more intricate than anticipated and she delves deeper into her investigation, a clandestine scheme involving drug smuggling, murder and corruption in influential circles begins to unravel, giving viewers a journey on the complexities of Weathers' pursuit of truth in the face of a web of deceit. On the ABC Sunday movie, move over Clint, look out Arnold, I'll be back. Sybil Shepard is Stormy Weathers. Have it, Sam. Try Sam. She's a private detective. Yeah. What's wrong with Stormy? Only strippers are called Stormy. About to make a drug ring very public. You way over your head on this. She's up to her neck in Casanovas and Canines. In Ninjas and Nuns. Oh. Oh. Sybil Shepard is on the case as... Stormy Weathers. Steel Collar Man, described as a, let's say, budget-friendly counterpart to the $6 million man... Originally part of a lineup of unconventional programming presented by ABC during the summer in lieu of regular reruns, this series allowed viewers to explore some more intriguing concepts and showcasing some ideas that might not otherwise have come to fruition. The show, featuring special effects by Stan Winston, revolves around a quirky premise involving a brilliant inventor and his android, portrayed by Saturday Night Live star Charles Rocket, fleeing from the government forces. Beyond mere escape, however, the android's journey unfolds as a trek to Washington aimed at pleading for his right to exist. Creator and creation embark on wacky escapades, such as a memorable encounter in a good old boy's town pool hall, with Charles Rocket, an 80s cult icon basically, known for his unconventional humour and the infamous incident leading to his SNL departure, was poised for potential stardom with Steel Collarman. Despite its cancellation, Rocket did find success in recurring roles on Moonlighting and Max Headroom. I am ready. Nice doing business with you, Jake. 
Deadlier Than the Mail, a 1976 British crime mystery film directed by Ralph Thomas and featuring Richard Johnson and Elke Summer. It stands as a notable entry in a wave of James Bond-inspired productions from the 60s. The film features Bulldog Drummond, a well-established detective fiction hero, as a suave Korean War veteran. The narrative unfolds as Drummond pursues a pair of alluring assassins, Irma and Penelope, who carry out killings for both sport and profit. Glamorous assassin Irma executes a series of high-profile murders, setting the stage for a mystery that involves oil tycoons, conspiracies and political intrigue. Drummond, approached to investigate by Sir John Bledlow, embarks on a journey filled with suspense and danger, and the plot weaves through boardroom negotiations, deadly cigars and a ticking time bomb hidden in a hair clip. Despite it having an X rating due to objectionable content from the British Board of Film Censors, Deadlier Than the Mail stands as a distinctive piece in the realm of 1960s crime and mystery films. It was intended as a television series pilot, but it was never picked up. Good morning. Lovely day, isn't it? Are you Mr. Wingard? Yes. Right. <laughs> oh, poor Mr. Wingard. Must arrange a proper match between you and Chang someday. He's a black belt, you know. Hmm. Well, you better tell him to use it to keep his pants up with then. <laughs> and in 1995, NBC aired a television pilot titled The Omen on September the 8th, making an ambitious endeavour to expand the existing franchise into the realm of TV. Directed by Jack Shoulder, the hour-long episode, despite having Richard Donner attached as an executive producer, faced setbacks as the pilot failed to gain any traction, resulting in the series never actually advancing beyond this initial attempt. Diverging from the narrative of the films, The Omen unfolds as a unique story introducing a group of individuals united by their independent connections to a mysterious entity. The deviation from this established Omen universe suggests a creative effort to try and explore new facets of the franchise in the television format, but the pilot's inability to resonate with audiences of the existing sort of universe it led to its ultimate demise and the abandonment of any plans for a full-fledged series. I'm uh, Carl Reitman. I'm the sole member of the Dynamo Public Relations team here at this hospital. I don't, I don't think I've seen you around. Jackman Associated Press. Is it all right if I ask you some questions? Well, absolutely, Jack. Fire away. It's trying to find the perfect vessel, the leader who can create terror on which it feasts. Just open your history book. History is full of monsters. <sighs> I entered your wife through her eyes, Jack. Beautiful green eyes. I saw your baby. But you would love that little girl, Jack. She looked just like your wife. Same pretty eyes. Yes! <laughs> Did I miss any out? There must be loads more of these. You let me know in the comments below. Please hit that thumbs up button. It doesn't hurt. It won't cost you a penny, but it means a lot to me. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Share this video with your friends and all that good YouTube stuff. Bye for now.